Now we're going to review types of chemical bonds. We've learned about these previously, but we just want a quick review so we remember the properties of these bonds and the types of atoms that show up in these bonds. There are three basic types we worry about, covalent bonds, ionic bonds, and metallic bonds. So let's just go over these and let's recall the basic properties of these bonds. Covalent bonds form when valence electrons are shared between two non-metal atoms. So for instance, let's say I had two hydrogen atoms. Each of these has one electron. If they wanted to form a bond, they will choose to put those electrons between them and share those electrons. So that's supposed to be two electrons there. Um, so we can see these electrons are very localized between the two hydrogen atoms while they share them. They like to stick really between the two atoms. So that's why we'll often draw covalent bonds with a line that shows the bond is located directly between the hydrogen atoms. So again, these are when non-metal atoms share their valence electrons and they form these highly directional localized bonds between the two atoms. Ionic bonds are very different. Ionic bonds form between two oppositely charged ions. Now sometime you, sometimes you'll have two atoms come together, such as a metal and a non-metal, that are originally neutral. But metals like to get rid of electrons and non-metals like to take them. So the metal can actually transfer an electron over to the non-metal and form a positive metal ion and a negative non-metal ion. Now we all know that opposites attract, so now these two positive and negatively charged ions will become attracted to each other and that forms an ionic bond. Now that's the most common example, but ionic bonds can form between a large number of different types of ions, metal and non-metal, a metal and a polyatomic ion such as nitrate or sulfate, um, polyatomic ions and non-metals or two polyatomic ions together. The basic idea is they're formed between oppositely charged ions. Ionic bonds are also different because they're not as specific as covalent bonds. If I have a positive ion, he's not only going to be attracted to one negative ion, he's going to be attracted to every single negative ion that comes within view of him. So we say that these bonds are non-directional because they're attracted to any oppositely charged ion in any direction. So covalent bonds were very localized. The electrons are between two atoms that are sharing them. Ionic bonds are not that specific. They're non-directional, attracted in all directions. Now those are the two main types of bonds we tend to worry about, but we can also look at our metallic bonds. These, not surprisingly, form between two or more metal ions. And metals um, also share their electrons, but very differently from covalent bonds. If you have metal ion or metal atoms together in a solid, it turns out that they don't mind letting their electrons just sort of roam around everywhere. So the electrons can move around wherever they want, and the electrons in that way can um, move from one metal atom to the other. So one way of looking at this is that your metal atoms are actually moving around in a sea of these electrons. So this is called the electron C model. But it makes metals very good conductors because since they don't mind if their electrons move around, they don't care whose electrons they end up with, they can conduct electricity very, very easily. So now that we've established our three types of bonds, what we want to do is actually just figure out, if I look at a compound, which bonds does it contain? And so we can look at this very simple type of flowchart, and we can see there's really one main question we need to ask ourselves. What types of atoms or ions are involved in the compound? And there are three basic categories. One is if you only have nonmetals. If you only have nonmetals and there are no polyatomic ions in there, then those must be covalent bonds, and we can remember the basic properties of our covalent bonds. If you have a metal in there, you know you're going to have ionic bonds. Metals do not form covalent bonds. So if you see a metal and a nonmetal, automatically that's going to be ionic bonds. And again, we should remember their general properties. The last category is probably the toughest, and that's when we see we have a polyatomic ion in there. Polyatomic ions are a little bit tricky because they're actually a group of atoms that are held together by covalent bonds that form a large ion. So for instance, NO3, the nitrate ion, that itself the nitrogen and three oxygens are held together by covalent bonds. But then that 
negative ion can be attracted to a positive ion such as sodium to form an ionic bond. So we see we not only have covalent bonds within the NO3, but we have an ionic bond between the sodium and the nitrate piece. So if you ever see a polyatomic ion, it's going to contain both ionic and covalent bonds in that compound. And that's a little tricky if we don't recognize our polyatomics. So that's the key there, knowing your polyatomic ions. So let's do a few examples here. So really easy. All we really have to ask ourselves for each compound is, what type of atoms or what type of compounds does it contain? Um, or ions, rather. So let's look at our first example, CCL4. Really simple. We're just going to look at each atom and say, what type of atom is this? So carbon is a nonmetal. Chlorine is a nonmetal. Only nonmetals and no polyatomics. This must have covalent bonds. Really, really simple. Uh, next, we can look at our <clears throat> aluminum chloride. So. AlCl3, aluminum here, that's a metal. Cl, that's a nonmetal. Metal and nonmetal, really easy. That's going to be our ionic bonds. Next example we have sodium nitrate, NaNO3. We kind of looked at this one before, but we'll do it again. So we say, okay, Na, that's a metal ion. Now, nitrogen and oxygen, those are both nonmetals. However, NO3 is itself, or NO3 as a whole, is a polyatomic ion. The nitrogen and oxygen are held together by covalent bonds. So since we have metal and a polyatomic ion, this must have both ionic and covalent bonds in there. Last example, we have ammonium bromide here, NH4Br. Now, sometimes people will look at this and say, okay, nitrogen, hydrogen, bromine, these are all nonmetals, but again, we have to recognize NH4, that's a polyatomic, that's my ammonium ion. And anytime I have a polyatomic, in this case paired up with a nonmetal, that's going to mean it has both ionic and covalent bonds.